day of my sister's vegetable garden um, and there are lots of exotic vegetables growing here and I'm going to do a tour I'm going to try and be as quick as I can um, however um, there is a lot to go through so please be patient anyway so let me start here so this is a couple of beds of chilies and they're all a diff different type of chilies there's not a lot growing at the moment but there are some growing and you, go, you can see there's one growing there and there are some chilies growing i think these are like a jalapeno type and here's another uh, lighter colored a lighter colored chilies you can see it's a little bit yellow just like that So in a couple of weeks, so in a couple of weeks, these will eventually, hopefully, so in a couple of weeks, hopefully these beds will look really, really nice with the reds and the greens and the yellows, um, all the different type of chilies. Um, there are more chilies growing here, here as well. There's a bunch of them. And the plants are looking nice and healthy. So I'm really, really looking forward to seeing how these grow in, in the next few weeks. And then next to these, we've got the three big trellises of beans. And some of the beans have already started growing. The flowers are really, really pretty. And you can see the little baby beans growing. These are hyacinth beans. They're yeah, very, very tasty and a very pretty um, bean plant. Flowers look great. Here's a here's another type of bean. Let me show you. There's some grain. Rather like French beans. There you go. And then just next to these, you've got these very beautiful purple and pinky flowers with these beans and I'm not sure what type of bean they are they look very much like the hyacinth beans but they're doing really well so they've been the earliest cropper of the beans so far um, in these trellises anyway and here's a long bean in Bengali we call it lubiri so a lot of these vegetables are exotic vegetables, of course. So we, you know, we try and grow a lot of the vegetables that do grow in Bangladesh. Um, sometimes we succeed, obviously Bangladesh, the climate is a lot different. So we don't necessarily um, grow everything that we normally have in Bangladesh, of course. So, you know, there's a waiting game for these beans. They're getting there, the flowers already. And these will be hopefully populated with loads of beans very soon in this bed you've we've got carrots so we this is the second sowing of um second transplanting of the carrots um the first lot died i think it's it's because they've got a lot of um there's bark chips at the bottom and there's not a lot of water retention so i think they just died out because of the lack of water and then there's a few tomato plants let me show you something quite interesting that i learned today so tomato flowers, so on this plant, let me show you a typical tomato flower, which we're all familiar with. And then you have this one. And this is almost like a flower within a flower. Another example of it is here. And apparently those flowers, um, well, after these flowers, the tomatoes you get are a lot larger than the average ones. So. That'll be interesting and is something to look out for. So there's another squ there's a squash plant here. It's not really any squash grown on this one, but there is over here. You can see the squash grown and there's a few grown over here. And something's been munching on this. And then courgettes. And this one's not doing great. But 
because of this apple tree, uh, my mother always told me that anything under trees don't really grow too well. Um, I mean, it's not like it doesn't get any sunlight. It gets a lot of direct sunlight. Um, but I guess there must be a reason why under trees th things don't grow necessarily too well. Here, these are a Turkish cabbage. And here we did have uh, radish grown. I pulled them all off today and I'll show you those later. Um, carrots again. They seem to be doing fine. These are like a roundish carrot, a short round carrot. I won't pick, the, pick this just yet, but they're growing. And then here we have chard. So these are, this is rainbow chard. So this is chard of a few different colors. And you can see the red, the yellow and the white. And there's also a pink variety as well. Then you've got a few leek and then there's beetroot. So this is the first time we've tried, we've tried beetroot and leek. So let's see how that goes. And then on the, this end of the bed, you can see a row of gourd plants and the gourds are growing. So you can see is is one there and these are a bangladeshi variety there's another one here and there's this this one here which my sister would like to keep to keep the seeds and then as we go up the trellis there are more growing Top of the trellis you got these and there's another one that looks like it will make it and there's a few others now i'm not sure how many of these will actually um, become fully fully sized gourds and then if we move on to the other end of the trellis there are another row of gourd plants just along here and some gourds are also growing up there you see these two they seem to be good. And there's another one here. They seem to be fine. And there's a, this bunch of long ones, which are the same variety of the ones that I grow in my garden. And um, yeah, it look like, looks like most of them will make it. So now here, look, let me just show you something. This is an example of pollinating, um, hand pollinating. So you can see this is a female gourd flower it's very well because it's got the fruit at the back you can see the fruits growing so all I do all you need to do is go and get yourself a male flower take off all the petals so the area of the flower with all the pollen is exposed and then just rub that to so take that part and then rub that just gently into this middle area and as long as there's a little bit of pollen in there hopefully that's pollinated and that will hopefully grow into one of these Um, just in front of the trellis with the, with the gourds, we have the tomato plants here. So you can see my sister's been taking all the suckers off uh, as much as she can, um, and all the lower leaves. And that also protects your plant, uh, tomato plants against blight. So they looking, they looking fine. More cucumber plants here. These are as a backup in case, um, the main area of cucumbers didn't grow so well and they in fact didn't uh, as well as they wished or they thought they would and then next to these are the aubergine plants and you can see there's loads and loads of little aubergines growing loads of them ah oh, that one could be picked so lots of aubergines doing quite well and these plants were sown in Bangladesh sown in Bangladesh um, came over to England on a airplane and my sister planted them and they're doing brilliantly well so if you didn't think that would work it sure does look at this planted in another country vegetable growing vegetable plants planted in another country sown in another country and then bought here so here we are um just next to these gourds we've got more chili plants and there are some chilies growing And there's another variety 
and then a few more aubergine plants which haven't done so well really so but you can see there's there are flowers growing so hopefully they'll give some aubergines now in this back bed there's a mixture of quite a few things so on against the fence to start with there's runner beans and then you have a different type of french beans in front of those my sister planted some um, dwarf beans and you can see that these this is what the dwarf beans look like so they got some streaks and they're not completely plain plain green um which are different to the ones that i had in my garden and then um she had other stuff growing here. you can see there's some onions and the onions have gone quite large look at these Um, we just planted a few more bean plants here. These extra bean plants. There's some leek, and these are beetroot. So there's a lot more beetroot plants and a few leek plants along here. But you can see the French beans doing quite well. So they're ready to be picked. This apple tree hasn't done so well this year. There's a few apples. I'll show you in a glance. You probably won't be able to see many, um, but I can see there's a few up there. But the other apple tree has done much better. That one has done a lot better. And again, too many apples for us to eat they just fall on the ground and eventually they're just collected and they go into the compost heap um, here are three more rows of beans well two of, two rows of beans nothing really grown in this first row yet but in the second row these are beans that my sister bought from one of the major major superstores um, they've started to fruit really early so that's great and so she's going to be keeping some of these beans for next year you can see aphids if you do see aphids or black flies um, on your bean plants just take off the leaves if you can and just rub off these aphids just kill them off straight away because otherwise if you don't keep on top of them if they overwhelm your plant um, your plants will just suffer completely and nothing will grow to be honest if however you notice ants climbing up these then you could probably leave it because the ants they eat the black flies or the aphids and in fact they even farm um, black flies and aphids so that's not something you can learn about this is a chocha there you go some grain and it's a very easy plant to grow to be honest and here's a fully grown one just there Here's another. So they're very prolific growers, these are Chochas. Um, and she's got a whole row of these. Hopefully, hopefully she gets an abundant amount of Chochas. This is another exotic plant grown commonly in Bangladesh. It's called a uh, Kumra. Now, a Kumra is very much like a gourd or a squash. Uh, here's a small one. And once they're fully grown, they're about two, three kilos in weight and you can cook it as a savory dish and if they're ripe um, if they're fully grown then you can actually cook a sweet dish out of them so this is the first time my sister's grown a kumra plant I'm, I'm i really i apologize for not knowing the name of this vegetable in english but hopefully in time i'll get the answer and if you know the answer please leave that in the comments so this is taro and next to taro this is elang shag so this is another vegetable that's just very much like a spinach Grows in, Bang grows in Bangladesh in very uh, wet conditions, so they need a lot of water. So you just take the stems and make your dish out of that. Now there's more taro, and there were some spare chili plants. Um, we've just been planting them in the pots. There's a mint bush, this is a citrus tree of some kind, another naga chili some spare cucumber plants here and inside the greenhouse there are some this so this again is a vegetable that i don't know the name of um it's in bengali it's called 
Kerala, I think it's called, um, or bitter gourd maybe in English, but if you do know, the, if you recognize this, this plant, um, please leave the, uh, the answer uh, to its name um, in the comment section. And here's some more Naga plants. So they're doing fine in the greenhouse. This is a plant that I gave to my sister. This is yellow submarine. So they're like longish chilies and they eventually turns yellow, obviously. All right, so here's more Naga chili plants, which are just spare plants that my sister has. Eventually she will have to either transplant them into pots or into um, into ground, into the ground. These are all Naga chili plants. If you, if you live in East London and you'd like one or two plants, just contact me. Leave me your email address and sh I'm sure my sister won't mind giving you uh, one or two plants. So here was the two trellises made for the cucumbers. Now, unfortunately, early on, a few months ago, we planted cucumber plants in both, under both trellises. And you can see there's no cucumber plants in this area. They all died, unfortunately. You can see them suffering just there. And then, however, there are some cucumbers that have grown. Let's show you. Please excuse the telephone ring. Some going there. Another one going here. So it's not like it's been a complete failure, but it's definitely not as well as it has grown in previous years for my sister. Um, previously, she's had hundreds, literally, of cucumbers. So, you know, having that confidence, she planted it. Well, we, we, we built these trellises um to grow lots of cucumbers but we're not going to waste the area because my sister has already planted a couple of gourd plants and then they'll climb and they'll cover all of this and there's another couple here so use up the area and just over here by the fence this is shark fin melon so again in bengalis we call it chinese kumra quite commonly i guess this is an asian vegetable and you can see there's a kumra growing and there's another one just there. Um, some baby ones growing. So this plant has gone really big. You can see that it's spread all over the fence to here and in this direction as well. And then just at the bottom in these two boxes are cucumber melon plants. And you can see this one's pretty much in the shade. This one's doing a lot better. No cucumber melons as of yet. I can see some yellow flowers, but they completely overwhelmed this rose bush. Then these three beds here. So in this first bed, we have denga or dugi. This is a type of amaranth. We eat the leaves and the stems. And this is a cabbage, which I sowed in my garden and then we just transplanted it here. Not sure what type of cabbage it is. Well, let's see. We'll let it grow and see. Let it go and find out. Um, this is red amaranth. So you can actually eat them at this at this uh, size. Um, some of it has been uprooted already and we've taken some. This uh, bush of runner beans, well, they weren't actually sown here. So the runner bean, there weren't runner bean plants growing here last year. And if you, as long as you don't take the actual roots out, sometimes a runner bean um, plant survives the world the roots regrow the following year and this is what happened here so there's a couple of runner bean plants and my sister just put some sticks there and you can see the beans are already growing she's already picked some beans and given some out to her friends this was all coriander up to the end here and we just um uprooted or cut off a lot of these took a lot of the coriander that was here picked it all and this was um this is red amaranth and more chili plants. So she's got more chili plants eventually. I guess you'll uproot that and just replace the area with, with chili plants. Um, here are a few more chili plants. As of yet, not a lot growing on them. And then just in front of these, and just in just in front of the chili plants is foy shag. So you just break the stems off. So something like that, you break the stem off and then the plant gives you more stems. As you can see here, there's one, two, three, four, Five. there's loads of stems growing so you just take the stems off and the plant gives more and more stems much like a lot of other leafy vegetables so this is uh, very much like a spinach really um, now and then in these pots here are 
mainly flowers and tomato plants and here's a few chili plants which will need to be transplanted um, it's a lot to keep up with when you've got such a big garden and a lot of plants and um, so my sister does do a lot of transplanting very late you know and I've I, I come here every every now and again just to help her out so some flowers so this this year she started to grow a lot more flowers this is an olive plant an olive tree wasn't doing very well the leaves were very much yellow uh, a few weeks ago but looking nice and healthy and this is it really so and what we did today we did some harvesting and this is what we gathered actually so all the beetroot leaves we've taken all those so we've got like a basket full of beetroot leaves then look at all these radish they're a nice size had to, we had to share it with the quitters so and some aubergines so it's a nice little pick um, chard leaves and spinach leaves we've just mixed it together oh and some runner beans my sisters picked some of the runner beans um, and from this area there was lots of uh, coriander growing and also in these areas um, so we uprooted all of that and this bucket is full it's actually full to the top I can't condense it any further there you go bucket full of coriander so I'm just gonna take some with me and I'm gonna give some out to my neighbors and some relatives um, because that's a lot of coriander um, so I know this was a long video guys and um, I hope you enjoyed the tour um, there hopefully there'll be a lot more things growing in the next few weeks and a couple of months and my sister and I are determined to do a lot of vegetable uh, sorry winter vegetable growing this year so let's see how that plans out but yeah please subscribe to my channel and keep up but what I'll do next time I come around I'll try and talk a lot more about some of the individual vegetables if there's anything you'd you'd like me to elaborate on in particular please let me know I'm not really in the you know in the business of doing videos for the sake of it but if there's something that you'd like me to talk about i'm more than happy to do that um, but i do like sharing um the ideas of gardening that i have and sharing with other people and you know just creating a discussion so please um subscribe as i said um give me a thumbs up and look forward to more videos that i'll upload soon on my channel take care guys and i'll see you soon